G'day everyone and welcome to Vino Mofo. Uh, it's Mikey here and we've invited Matt Steele um, from Cornelius um, Cornelius Cheese, Cheese Munger, Indeed. Into, uh, into the office today to share uh, some, some cheese with us because we've seen, we've seen what, you, what you do, uh, had a bit of a chat to you uh, on the phone and your passion for cheese is, uh, it, it's inspiring. Thanks, man. And there's a lot of stuff that you're talking about that I don't really have any idea about too. And I guess cheese, you know, if, it's, if you yeah. can make an analogy with wine, uh, it's one of those things that we, that we that wine is one of those things we drink, cheese we eat, um, but there's so much more to it if you want to kind of dig deeper. Yeah. So we've got a few cheeses here. We've got a few wines. We, we might just have a little, you know, a bit of a, a, bit of a taste of of those to see what works. Yeah, cool. But I'd love to get some info from you, mate. For, for somebody who doesn't really know a lot about cheese, um, before we talk about this, how did you get into being a cheese monger? I, um, I bought a cheese shop. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was studying and um, I used to go to this cheese shop in Canada all the time. And it just happened that the guys wanted to sell and I was graduating. And we went from there. Um, I, I bought a cheese shop. As in for office. You're going to learn pretty quick. That's a, uh, if, you, if you dive in the deep end like that's that. That's a steep learning curve, that's for sure. Yeah, we and spent uh, a lot of time doing that. And then we just went purely online earlier, late last year. Cool. Yeah. And so now uh, your way of getting these amazing cheeses to people is through through a, a club that you yeah. send out regular cheese clubs. We also have uh, you know your, your daily shop and cheese mum choice and things like that. You know, so I pick five of the best cheeses for the week. And mm-hmm. awesome. Sling them your way as fast as I can. Awesome. Yeah. I notice you do some stuff on online too, uh, yeah. on YouTube. You, yeah. You, you know, you're giving a lot of information about yeah. about the provenance of these cheese, the the, the cheese making practices, um, where they come from, how they're made, and you know some of the really detailed tasting notes too. Yeah. <laughs> you can really you can really dig deep, can't you? That's that's where Cheese Club starts. You know, um, Cheese Club is, is where we our members get first access to information and the best cheese is available on the day. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's get stuck into it. Cool. Um, we've got three cheeses here. Do you want to quickly run through what each of them are? We're going to start with my inspiration and, and the reason I'm a cheesemonger today. We're going to start with Papillon Rockfall over here. Awesome. Um, so we're, we're kind of starting. We're, we're starting with probably the most the, the most pungent yeah. and, and fully full flavoured of, of the cheeses yeah. we've got here. Yeah, absolutely. So we're mixing it up. We're breaking the rules. Why not? You know, um, yeah, cool. I, I think there's, there's there's space in the world for this three cheese combo thing. You don't necessarily have to have a hard, a soft, and a blue. Just cheeses that appeal to you and, and you enjoy, and cool. that your friends and guests will enjoy as well. Like, yeah, that's more important. Is it fair to say? I mean, my the, the cheese that kind of that, that blew my mind, sort of opened my my world to cheese, um, opened my mind to the world of cheese, and, and just you know how how intense it could be is was rock for. Mm. Uh, it's it's. For, for somebody who's you know used to just some pretty standard and bland type of uh, you know sort of regular household cheese, mm. that's probably a bit of a stretch, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's raw milk. It's the softest raw milk cheese we can we can bring into the country. Um, it's used milk, so you know you're really starting from a very high kind of fat content. It's got that rich buttery unctuousness, and then combining that with the saltiness of the blue, you end up with this full-on flavour bomb of cheese. <laughs> awesome. And you were talking earlier about being able to. Uh, Cut that back, you know, just a little bit of butter and some bread, and that's a great way to introduce people to Rockfall. Yeah, is cut it back with just some butter and some bread, spread it on, match it with a good wine, go from there. Yeah, cool. Let's do it, mate. Do you want to? Do you want to? Tuck into that. Yeah, cool. Um, look, I like your knife, by the way. Yeah, we've we've, we've styled this beautifully. Um, <laughs> it's actually got mine. Jimmy, Jimmy, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we nicked that one. It's a um, South Australian Shiraz wine. Jimmy and, and Kit the yeah. here have uh, taken some amazing, oh. awesome snaps of this cheese because yeah. it, you know, we need to do it justice. When you look at that, the ooze of that of that brie, yeah. uh, it's just it's just one of life's great pleasures to, uh, yeah, to tuck into that. So we've got some rock fork. I've got a um, a, a Botrytis uh, Vidello. That's for you. Dude. Thanks, mate. No worries. Uh, and you know, I'm no food and wine, I'm no food and cheese matching expert. Yeah. But I guess you know, we've got a pretty full on, uh, very quite salty. Yeah. Um, very powerful cheese, so we've gone for something with a fair bit, well, a lot of sweetness, yeah. uh, just to kind of you know to, to match that. Yeah. Um, so let, let's give it a crack, mate, and see and see how it goes. This is the, this is the cheese I find. You know, I always throw this into wine and cheese matchings when I do them with winemakers and wine people, mm. and I, I love just to see. Oh, I should I be smelling it first? I'm just going straight. Down I, the I just did. <laughs> you know, that's my thing. Love it. Mm. 
And so we've got some fruit here as well. We've got some honeycomb. Mm. Would you typically eat fruit? Dried fruit, fresh fruit, you know, sweet honey. Often you see, you know, honey drizzled over over these blue blue cheeses yeah. and rock for. Is that how you work? I did cheese, yeah, used milk cheeses, sheep milk cheeses. Um, we that's that's really got my palate on fire. There's so much pepperiness and yeah, that's that's gonna linger. From the rock for Yeah. Yeah, I'm really digging that. Kinda of works, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a great compliment. Texturally too, that's so so soft and yeah and um and you know and syrupy. Beautiful. <laughs> it's a it's a combo that makes you pause. Um, it is. You just kind of stop and go, hang on, I just need to deal with whatever's happening in my mind. <laughs> because it deserves some time and respect and yeah. a little bit of reference. It's a pretty yeah, it's a pretty special experience. Yeah. Um so Roquefort, um, and Chago, the, the used milk cheeses, the, the firmer or the, the bolder used milk cheeses tend to lend themselves really well to honey uh, and honeycomb, and it's just a great combination. Yeah. You know, we like to get Manchego, crumb it, fry it, and then serve it just with a chunk of, of honeycomb on top, just as a, an appetizer. I'm coming to your place for, <laughs> for dinner, mate. That sounds amazing. Uh, okay, cool. So that's, that's the Roquefort. Um, this, is, this is important, obviously. This is from... Uh, it's from Roquefort. Okay. Um, we make it make it here. We cannot make rock for here. We can get the mould, we can get the cultures, but we can't make this cheese in Australia yet. Okay. We're getting close. Uh, a couple of guys in South Australia have made a raw milk blue cheese. Yep. It's pretty good. Uh, I think it's on the way to being amazing. And in a couple of years, this is the kind of thing that you're going to see from Australian cheese makers. Okay. Awesome. Mm. Love that. Yeah. Um, I was meant to, uh, suggesting to you before something that I've done with, with this was uh, mix it up with some. Uh, with, with some butter, yeah. Um, just roll, roll it out in a bit of a, you know, like a sort of sausage sausage shape. Stick it in the freezer or in the fridge, and then like just cut a little, um, a little disc of it to chuck on some steak. Yeah. Um, when after it's cooked, just melts, yeah. oozes. It's Especially beautiful. if you can get some dry aged steak, or you can dry age it yourself. Mm. Um, that umami character in here with that, you know, that sixth sense kind of combination of flavors, and then dry aged steak it's just it's again it's a flavour wow. that's yeah. insane I'm still tasting that too that that lasts for it's going to be a day yeah awesome alright so look, we've still got a bit of this um, this Petritus um, from Dello in our glass mm-hmm. as I said I think it's a good a good idea just to mix and match and see see what works that was a that was a bang on yeah combination I yeah. reckon um, where do you reckon we go to if we're sort of stepping down in flavour intensity, where to? Where to next? I, I think we head over to Motown. Um, Motown, <laughs> Brie de Mo. Um, Brie de Mo. Well, this is from okay. de Mo. It's a white malt cheese from just outside Paris, from a town conveniently called Mo. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and this is this is that ooze, isn't it? Yeah. It, we cut it up this morning, and it was you know it was quite hard, but yeah. after a you know a couple of hours out of the fridge, yeah. it just kind of it's just kind of like it's like what happens after a big meal and you sit in the couch, you just kind of you know kind of. Just start to. It's comfortable. You can't yeah. s- st- sink into it. You start to find its its place in life, you know, and and that's something that uh, I think you know I, I try to get the message out about is cheese needs to be out of the fridge for a long while before you eat it, and the, the, the bigger the piece. Thank you, pomegranate. Yeah. Ooh, pomegranate's lovely. Um, the bigger the piece, the kind of more time, in a in a kind of room temperature environment, you know, like your lounge room, probably three or four hours out of yeah. the fridge just to get it to that. Yep. Using delicious. Uh, is that more of, more of a textural thing? Yeah. You're going to notice change in the flavour. flavour is, you will. Yeah. You will. You'll get more of that back palate and more of a linger from the cheese. Yeah. Um, and texture as well. This will this will be a lot more kind of. Yeah. I've done the same with, with the wine as well. Um, these aren't straight out of the fridge. Mm. Took them out of the fridge uh, probably forty five minutes ago. Mm. Um, and particularly with the, with the Chardonnay, we've, we've gone with the Chardonnay. This is um, one of Vino Mofo's collaborations um, with innocent bystander in the Yarra Valley. Mm. So, brie, full-bodied white, sort of full-bodied dry, yeah, uh, yeah. dry white. And you, especially you find with the, the European brees, they, they carry uh, a, a full-bodied white really well. Yeah. Um, there's a, a little bit of bitterness to them, and, and that kind of works well with a, a big, angry, bold chardonnay. Angry, bold chardonnay. Yeah. This one's a little bit, this, this one's a little bit more gentle. gentle. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, Texture, hey? Mm. That creamy. I just it. Mm. Beautiful. Alright, well let's let's try it with this. 
I'm gonna give it a splash of shoddy and see, yeah. see yeah. how it goes. No. That's all we know. But you started to get that little bit you know, give you fresh one. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm it would lame, but no. I just want to yeah, but just I think this is great to do. Uh, you know, haven't haven't done these combinations before, haven't tried these cheeses. Um, so I guess while there are rules as to what, what works or suggestions mm. um, as to what works and what's likely to be a good match when it comes to the wines you choose with cheeses and food in general, yeah. the best way to do it is to lay a few out. Um, if you can grab a couple of bottles, you know, get a few people together and just figure out your own little sweet spot. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's a bloody good way to, you know, to enjoy yourself if nothing else. We did a tasting one night. Uh, we did 60 cheeses and 30 wines in a night. Um, really, just ta just really a taste, taste, sorry, just a taste of that. You know. <laughs> yeah. And, but a, a great way to expand yeah. your, your palate, whether, whether it's with wines yeah. and cheeses, because you, you know, where else would you get an opportunity to do that? Mm. Can I really invite my son to do that one, mate? Yeah, sure. Do. Awesome. Um, cheese club, that's what's for dinner. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I get a bit more bread? Just yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, I should do this next year. <laughs> mm. Before, uh, Excuse fingers. See, that's, that's how the French serve it. It's just a big slap on. Yeah. And you want to get a bit of that rind as well? Yeah, um, from, from about the nose down, you want to start being polite and taking your share of the rind as well. Yeah, okay. I, I see too many parties where people try to hollow the cheese out. The rind is completely edible, yeah. and it's part of the flavour of the cheese. Yeah, so it's important. This is important? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Brie de Meaux. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously making you know, similar styles of Brie here uh, in Australia. There's an outstanding Australian Brie. Um, the, the pasteurized brie market is a lot further along yeah. than, the, than the, the raw cheese market in Australia. Um, always pause for wine. Always. Oh man, I, I, I'm going to sit here and just not, not say a word for this yeah. half an hour. No, it's, but it's probably going to make a pretty horrible <laughs> <pretty horrible, laughs> video. <laughs> just, um, but you know, it does, it kind of stops you in your, in your tracks, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's what we love about it because I think there's some, there's some great analogies between cheese and wine. Mm. Wine's something, you know, it's, it's made out of grapes. Yeah. For many grape cheese. It's, it's basically the only thing that's simpler than cheese, as far as something we eat or yeah. drink. But throughout that process, um, what it results in, some of those flavour characteristics and the texture of the experience, what you're tasting in a, you know, in, in a great wine uh, is so much more than, than, than grape juice. Mm. Likewise, cheese is, is milk, mm. sheep's milk, cow's milk. Um, and so these flavours, uh, the textures that are you know result of you know some really some careful processes and mm. addition of, um, of bacteria and so forth, molds and yeast. It um, yeah. just transforms into something completely different. But mm. essentially, they're really you know simple, um, you know, simple products. Uh, uh, Aristotle said it. You know, well, I, I hate quoting the guy because you sound weird doing it. But it's well, mate, we're, 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 we're you know we're yeah. doing a cheese and wine taste. You can you can get through it. It's milk's great leap towards immortality. It's, it's that, yeah, that moment yeah, that yeah. So that, that's just milk just going on. I'm, 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 I'm going to last forever. I'm just going to... Yeah. And, and that story you told about how, you know, sort of cheese uh, was sort of just, you know, accidentally discovered through yeah. the sloshing around the inside of a... Yeah. Of, well, a, of, a, of, a, of a cow's yeah. stomach. Yeah, well, any, any animal's stomach, really. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's where it comes from. You know, they... Um, our ancestors didn't waste any part of the animal and they milked it and they put the milk into an internal organ and they carried it to the next village. Yeah. And in that process, it churned up and turned into what we know as basically ricotta. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then they just kind of refined the process over the, over the years, depending on yeah. um, various temperature. I imagine the climate, temperature, um, humidity, all those sorts of conditions will, will result in, in, yeah. in different um, characteristics yeah. in a cheese. Absolutely. Achievement. Cool. All right, mate, let's, let's go on to the next one. Um, we'll do the sort of transition through the wines again because mm. I want to try um, uh, a red wine mm. with this last uh, cheese, which mm. is a, a washed rind. I think too often um, the go-to wine for most people with cheese is red, yeah. and sometimes it's a really big, bold, like tannic red, and it can just mm. it can just clash, yeah. you know. So we've gone with whites, yeah. and I think you know the more kind of lighter, um, uh, sort of maybe more fruit driven and, and light styles yeah. of reds will probably work better than your big 
with well, tannic reds. Absolutely. I, I find it very challenging to match a red wine with a cheese, mm. um, especially those those tannic you know, varieties. But but white wine just goes, eat me, drink me, yeah. have more of me, share me with your friends. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah, awesome. Particularly those more full, full body whites. Mm. Okay, so we've still got a bit of that Chardonnay left. Very keen to try this one because this is an Australian um, Miller oh. King River Gold washed rind. This, and it's funky, man. It stinks, yeah. doesn't it? it? But in a good way. Yeah. It smells like the back of a you know cupboard that's just been, there's some, you chuck some dirty, you know, wet clothes in there and it's just fested. For this, is, this is the kind weeks. of cheese that when we have to cut a lot of it, is the reason I can't catch a taxi. Like, because yeah. people that you yeah. got some pretty Dude, poor you need to personal that, hygiene. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate, get, let's get into that. Um, oh, here we go. By the way, this is in the best condition yes. I've, I've seen King River Cold in. Okay, and what, what makes, you know, what makes a cheese look? You guys uh, have got some photos of this that I'm sure you can show people later, but just oh, yeah, look just, at that. It's, it's got just a bit of an ooze. It's yeah. right all the way through, you know, top to bottom. You've got kind of that, that oozing funk, but not runny. <laughs> it's oozing funk. <laughs> yeah, it's, you speak my language. Speak my language, man. I, I speak fluid cheese. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm going to try and, you know, I'm, I'm sort of less less kind of cracker more cheese. Yeah. Um, particularly with, with these ones because we really want to get... Yeah. Especially with most of that texture as well. Yeah. Um, hard cheeses I tend not to eat with crackers. Um, but I, I evaluate more cheese than I eat. You wouldn't know that looking at me. Um, <laughs> But I'm doing well. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd be looking like that really right now if I was eating as much cheese. We um we, we taste every day. We taste the cheeses that are in the fridge every day, and we take notes on on how they're progressing and what they're doing and yeah. how they're tasting. And and King River Gold just it landed the other day, and we just went, that's got to boom now. It's right. just phenomenal. Shit. Well, let's not let's not let's not waste any time, mate. <laughs> Cheers. Jeez. I'm gonna have one of that. Yeah, I might do the same. And and really not gross with that, man. You get like. Brioche and toast. It's kind of, it, it tastes your breath by it, doesn't yeah. it? Like when you inhale, you know, some ammonia or something mm. like that, you kind of, you, you, you pause for a minute and, mm. probably because you're not supposed to inhale that kind of, is that a sort of natural reaction mm. for you know, bacteria? Fermented foods, you're like, you know, mm. your body's like, what are you doing? And then you, your mouth's like, I know what you've done and I love you for it. Yeah. It's my, that's pretty freaking special, that mm. is. Mm. All right.